Okay, another definitive technology, Powerfield Supercube 2 this time. Active crossover and power amplifier. This one came from Puerto Rico with a note. Thank you, Steve, for accepting my request to diagnose, repair my definitive technology Supercube 3, even though it's a 2, subwoofer electronics, as you can notice. I tried to remove the glue as much as possible, but it was not easy, and I was afraid to damage parts. As a summary, this unit was connected to a Furman power filter. We are experiencing many voltage variances from the grid. The 8 amps fuse blew, I think because of this. I replaced it, but there was no sound coming out. When I removed the two electronic parts from the acoustic box, I could notice some kind of burnt odor but I don't know where it came from. I watched your two videos of diagnostics and repairing the same part I have, so I felt confident to contact you since I already have experience with this type of equipment. By the way, your videos are great, but my knowledge to follow your procedure is quite behind a lot. I hope it has a cost-effective repair. Please contact me by email, redacted at hotmail.com, to let me know you receive it and quote my repair costs. My phone number is redacted, so we can communicate by text or WhatsApp. My English is horrible, but I can read and write better in English. I appreciate your help. This is my shipping address, Jose. All right, Jose, let's take a look at this thing and see what we come up with. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and check these main FETs. These are the power amplifier output FETs, the digital audio amplifier outputs. Okay, so these are the four FETs right here, and they are gate, drain source gate drain source gate drain source gate drain source so i'm going to check from gate to drain and i see a diode junction gate to source and drain to source and charging that's good gate drain a little lower than i want oh and look at that Let's reverse it. I don't like that whatsoever. Gate to source is 0 0.005 volts DC voltage. Let's look at ohms and see what we get there. And I see 5.7 ohms. That's not good. Source to drain. I see 226 ohms in one direction and 215 in the other direction. I'm not liking that whatsoever. Gate to drain, gate to source, source to drain, charging, I'm good with that. Now this one looks like it's been changed at one point. Yeah, 330 ohms. Each way, I'm not really happy with that. That one's charging. And I think we're gonna find a bad FET right here. Yeah, I'm not good with that whatsoever. Good with that. And charging. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is pull these four FETs out of the board and test them in the MK168 and see what they have to say. So I haven't got the FETs removed yet. I did remove the, the spring tensioners from them. Had to add some acetone to dissolve the red thread lock they have on there. But I did notice right off the bat that both of these are extremely loose and they normally have a zip tie It actually like holds them up to the heat sink. If you look closely, you'll see a couple of plastic insulators right here and right here. And then both of these zip ties are completely destroyed. So we'll have to pull those coils out, possibly silicone them down and then re-zip tie them back where they belong. But I do have the spring retainers loose and that one popped up on its own, almost like it's been replaced, like I said. Was that the one that had been soldered on? No, it's not. This one is the one that's been soldered on. 
That one's tight and this one is loose. But let's go ahead and unsolder these four FETs and we'll put them in the MK168 and test them. I'm always extremely suspicious of these two capacitors right here because they do have a tendency to climb in ESR. Now these are normally 100 microfarad caps at, and I can't quite see the voltage. Oh, these are only 10s at 50. The other ones I've worked on are 100s at I think 16 or 25, but let's go ahead and test those. We'll test these caps. These are extremely important because these two ICs that you see right down here are responsible for switching the FETs on and off in a timely fashion because if any of these two FETs are switched on simultaneously, that is disastrous. It actually feeds a pulse width modulation signal to these FETs to switch them on and off to either add or subtract DC voltage from the bus. So let's go ahead and pull these FETs out of here, test them out of circuit because there are clamping diodes, actually damper diodes right here. There's four of them. You can see them right there. One, two, three, four. And then we'll test these small signal diodes down here on the board as well and make sure that everything is good. Okay, while we're waiting for the solder sucker to warm up, because I did not have it on previously, let's go ahead and check these four capacitors that are associated with the output FETs. I like to see probably half an ohm or less on each of them. 4.3 on that one, 6.6 6 on that one. Now these are tens, 14 ohms on that one, 15 ohms on that one. Let me go ahead and check the values of those. Okay, so yeah, 14 ohms and 15 ohms. These are 100 microfarad caps. Those are absolutely toast. The most I would allow on a camp like that is probably in half an ohm. Now these aren't too terribly bad for the tens. I'm not terribly disappointed, but I do want to replace those because they were what, four ohms? Yeah, not, not good. So solder circuit should be warmed up. Let's go ahead and pull those four FETs out and test them out of circuit and see if we see any defects. There is a possibility that it could have possibly damaged these driver ICs right here. We want to make sure that's not a short externally to the FET on the circuit board itself. Okay, I have these connected to the MK168 and I did make a note on the back, a single scratch for transistor number one. So let's go ahead and give it a test, see what it says. So it should say GDS and that one is bad. 423 ohms in one direction and 320 ohms in the other direction. That is toast. So let's go into number two. And that is a good MOSFET, gate drain source. So number two is good, number one is bad. Now to number three. Oh, right off the bat, 5.82 ohms, that thing is toast. 
And finally, number four. And that's a good MOSFET. 558 millivolt bias, 2.48 nanofarads capacitance, and a forward voltage of 4.7 volts. So at a minimum, we have two bad FETs. But I'm not going to change this two. I'm going to change all four. Let's see what they are and if I can even get them. So these are ST, and the part number is W20NM50. Let me go on to some of the suppliers and see if I can even find these things. Well, this might be the end of the road for this unit. I'm not sure. I've actually had 10 of these on order since February. They kept pushing the date out, pushing the date out. Now it says 52 week lead time. I have another customer that has a Supercube Trinity on this unit. You might've seen my diagnosis on it where I changed a bunch of caps and found a single defective transistor, single defective FET. So he needs four. I ordered 10 just to have a couple spares. Well six in this case. And Mauser keeps telling me the date's been pushed back. The date's been pushed back and the date's been pushed back. So I'm thinking at this point, I'm going to order like 50 of them just to have them in stock when they finally show up so I can complete all these customers units. I've got this one and one other one that's eight. I've only ordered 10. I'm sure there's many more of these units out there over the entire planet that are going to need these FETs. So this is an ST manufacturer, ST Microelectronics, and the part number is a W20NM50. If anybody knows of a source for these things, please let me know. I'm sure my customers would be extremely happy to get their units back. But I don't want to order cheap Chinese knockoff garbage. That's the problem. I'm not going to order anything other than a factory ST W20NM50 from a quality supplier, Digikey, Mauser, Newark, any of these places I will accept, but virtually nobody else. I can get them from China, but I question the quality. I've been burned many times before from parts from China. They're just cheap, well, Chinese knockoffs. So I'm gonna end this video right here. Thank you for watching. Go and leave me a question, a comment, a concern, good or bad down below. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye. So I thought I'd just go ahead and use the MK168. And we'll go between pins 1 and 3 right here. Now that's a 10 microfarad cap. It does measure 10 microfarads, but look at the ESR, 7.3 ohms and a VLOS of 3%. This is one of the other 10 microfarad caps. 10.26 and 4.7 ohms with a VLOS of 2.3%. Now, one of the brand new 10 microfarad caps. So this is a new 10 microfarad cap. 11.1 .1 microfarad, VLOS 0.9 ohms and an ESR of 1.4 ohms. Much, much better. Now to the 100s. These are the ones I think killed this thing. Uh-oh, very slow response. Still testing. 33 microfarads with an ESR of 0.14K. That's 140 ohms. VLOS 33%. Now to the second one.
This is the second 100 microfarad cap. Oh, very slow once again. Should have had results by now. This is in real time. I'm not speeding this up whatsoever. 37 picofarads? Really? Okay, let me go ahead and make sure it's in there the right way. I'll put it backwards. We'll test it again. See what we get. Once again, real time. I'm not going to speed this up or slow it down whatsoever. Thirty-seven picofarads. I'm convinced that is the cap that killed this amplifier. Not a surge, nothing like that. So I've got another 100 microfarad cap. I'm just getting the leads because the positive lead is always longer, so I have to bend these around so I can get them in here. This is a brand new 100 microfarad cap. 104.0 and an ESR of 0.33 ohms. VLOS 1.6%. Excellent results on this capacitor. Now this is a Kimmet. 105 degrees Celsius, 100 microfarad, 16 volt. Now the other ones are Kimmets as well. 10 at 50, 105 degrees Celsius, Kimmet cap. Let's look and see what the old defective caps are. Oh, it's a Suscon. Oh my God, that's a suspect cap right off the bat. And is it 105 degree? No, it's only 85 degree. Oh man, what about the tens? Let's look at the tens. Maybe they're not Suscons. 85 degrees Celsius. Really right now? Come on. Oh, and it's a Suscon. That's a suspect cap right off the bat. 10 at 50. Oh, come on, you pay so much money for these items and they use these cheap Suscon caps in these things. Unfreaking believable. But just know the caps going back in are Kemet, which is a good quality manufacturer, 105 degree rated caps. Look at the date, 10 of 21. That one's not that old. And the date on this one, 7 of 21. Once again, not that old. Can we get a date code off of this whatsoever? 0937, maybe 37th week of 2009. I'm not sure that sub is that old. Might be. And on this one, the 10, 0941. So 41th week of 2009. Well, I guess it could be 13 years old. Interesting, let's just take a look at these real quick. 0937 and 0941. Okay, well, with any luck, I'll get some parts one day, maybe next year. I'm not sure, but we'll finish that repair at that time. Thanks for watching. Everyone have a great day. Bye bye.